Okay, uh, welcome to this session. Uh, we were discussing uh, the D flip flop based PFT in the last session, and the problem which we found was that uh, your reset uh, time period and your overlap delay was same. And in order to increase the overlap delay, you will end up increasing the reset delay. And what you will see there is that your uh, if you have a large T reset delay, then it limits the reference frequency at which your PFT can be clocked. Okay. So, to overcome some of those problems, we have a NAND based PFT. Let us try to understand that. Okay. So, in the, this NAND based PFT, let us name these uh, nodes so that it is easier to understand how it operates. Right. So, what you have this node is Rx and this node is Ry. Similarly, this node is Vx and this node is Vy. Here, uh, this particular PFD uh, uh, changes when you have a negative transitions at R and V. So, to begin with, let us say your R and V both are actually high. Okay, this is just an example. So, I am taking R and V both as high. If R and V both are high, and then what you have here is that your up bar and down bar, okay, these two nodes are also high. So, up bar, when up bar and down bar are also high, in that case, your Rx will happen to be 0 because it is a NAND gate, both the inputs are high. Uh, Vx will also be equal to 0. Right? So, Rx is 0, Vx is 0, which will reinforce that Ry is high. And similarly, Vy will also be high initially. So, Ry and Vy are high and your Rx and Vx are 0. And if you look at the reset, in the reset you have Rx, Ry, Vx and Vy. So, reset pin is going to be because you have 0 at the input of the NAND gate, what you will have is reset is also going to be high. Okay. So, reset is high. Now, you look at it. This is 1. This one is 0. So, 0 is going to give you 1 here and 1 is 1, 0. This is enforced. Okay. Now, you have a transition here on the negative edge you have a R transition here. When R goes from 1 to 0, your Rx is going to go from 0 to 1. Okay? Rx goes from 0 to 1. Right? So, when your R goes from 1 to 0, Rx goes from 0 to 1. When Rx goes from 0 to 1, what you have this Ry was already 1, reset was 1 and this goes also to 1, your up bar signal will actually go from 1 to 0. Okay, this is what will happen at up bar. Right? Ry signal, so Rx goes from uh, uh, 0 to 1, this signal becomes 1. So, reset did not change. So, it is a NAND input. right? If we had 0 here on this branch earlier, then this is still reinforced. Ry does not change. So, all the signals carry the same way. Now, after some time, when the other rising edge comes, your V signal goes from high to low, let us say. This goes from high to low. When V signal goes from high to low, your the down signal will also go low, but before down signal, you are actually V x signal goes high. 
and Vx signal goes high after how much delay? Vx signal will go high after 1 and 2 delay, right. So, Vx signal goes high, when Vx signal goes high and then after the Vx signal your down bar signal will go low. Okay, so now you look at it, your at this particular point, you have your Vx signal high, you have your Rx signal high, so both Rx and Vx are high, Ry and Vy were high earlier. If all the signals for this NAND gate they become high, then the reset signal will go low. Okay. So, these two signals continue now. Now, as reset signal goes low after some time, right? What happens? Reset signal goes low. So, your up bar and down bar signal both will now go back to high again. So, based on our reset signal going low, our up bar and down bar signal go high again. Well, R and V, they are still 0 here, right. So, R x and V x, since R and V uh, signal are 0, R x and V x signal, they will remain 1, they will not change. Okay. So, R x and V x signals uh, do not change. Now, what happens to R y and V y? Now, you see a reset signal goes low, then just trace this curve, reset signal goes low, it becomes this is low. If this becomes low, then this is 1. If this is 1 and for this NAND gate, it was already 1. So, it was already 1, this will become 0. So, R y will become 0 and R y is going to become 0 after 2 NAND delays. So, R y, R x, yeah, this is here, R y goes to 0 after 2 NAND delays and V y signal will also go to 0. So, R y and V y signals, the both these signals will go to 0. As R y and V y signals go to 0, then after this NAND delay, 4 delay, your reset signal will again become high because the input is 0, right. So, your reset signal again becomes high, right. V by has changed to 0, it remains at 0 and reset becomes high. So, what you get is V by remains here like this, okay because R y is hold at 0 and then that anything will change only when your R signal will go high again. So, this is what you have. Now, let us just look at the delays and the overlap period. So, if you look at it, the overlap period between the up and down signals or up bar and down signals in this case is this much, right. And uh, how do we calculate this overlap? So, whenever V goes low, with respect to V, your down bar goes low. And uh, when you have V, first V x goes low, then from V x, your down signal, down bar signal goes, okay. So, what you see here that delay is uh, from V to V x, V x to down bar that is 1 and 2 and 1 and 3 delay. And after that from your V x signal because everything was uh, high, right. So, from your down bar signal is here from your V x signal, your reset signal actually goes low. Because your V y was already 1, R y was 1 and uh, Rx was also 1. 
what you only required was v x as 1. Once v x goes 1, then after this you get the reset signal. So, this delay itself is your t nand 4 plus whatever this delay tau d if you are having you have this delay here tau d right. Now, this uh, down bar is this much delay is only t nand 2 plus you have t nand 3 this is the delay right and from your reset signal to your this particular one is t nand 3 okay uh, this one is only t nand 3 so you can actually uh, and this delay is vx delay is only t nand 2 delay so if you work out all these things what you are going to find is that this t overlap is nothing but t nand 4 plus your tau d ok that is the thing which you have t nand 4 plus tau d and the reset signal if you think about it the reset signal is uh, uh, is without going to the diagram also you can see when the reset signal goes high, it goes through these two NAND gates and then 1 NAND 4 plus tau d. So, your T reset is 2 T NAND 2 plus T NAND 4 plus tau d. Okay. So, your reset signal actually is 2 t times nand 2 right plus t nand 4 plus tau d and t overlap is tau d itself ok. So, here uh, you can say your reset time appears to be uh, or it is actually large and your overlap time is, is smaller, but uh, there is some kind of uh, you can say earlier we had both uh, the overlap times and the uh, reset time they were same, but now they are depending on the gate delay. Normally, you have uh, your clock to queue and your flip flop delays are larger than the gate delays. So, we are able to reduce the reset time by having only the logic delays. Okay. So, uh, with the gate delays, we are able to reduce the reset time, but at the same time, at the same instant, we are also reducing the overlap time. So, we have to do something where our overlap time is uh, actually uh, larger okay, and our reset time is uh, actually smaller or we can increase our overlap time. Okay. So, in this particular case, we removed uh, tau d which was earlier this is the same t d which was earlier here. This t d we removed. So, we do not have this anymore right? and if you look at it in this case the t reset delay since we have gone through one of the NAND based PFDs uh, in more detail. So, looking at the reset once the reset goes high it is going to go come through the latch and this latch is going to come back like this. Okay. So, t reset delay happens to be 2 times t NAND 2 plus t nand 4 okay now the other thing is if you look at uh, earlier we named these nodes as uh, rx ry and this one was vx and vy okay so in this particular case when our vx node okay uh, when in the previous case uh, as soon as v goes low what happens is uh, our v x node will also go low right as v because up bar and down these two signals let us call these two signals x and y. x and y signals were initially high and r and y they were also r and v were also high as v signal goes low 
vx will go high and when vx goes high right vy and other signals were already what were these signals vy and uh, uh, ry they were already high right so when those two signals were already high then it took like a nand 3 uh, delay to uh, get them okay so now here what happens is as soon as vx vy was already high as soon as vx signal goes high you have one nand 2 delays after which it goes down bar signal goes low the difference here is that once your reset signal goes high it actually previously the reset signal was making our y signal to go high again now the reset signal has to if the even if the reset signal goes high it has to wait and come through these nand latches and then make our v signal vy signal to go high okay so you increase this v y when only when v y signal will go high will uh, change then only things will change here right so if you look at it our r y and r v r y and v y signal the reset signal is actually making a change here right so when reset signal goes low as you see when reset signal goes low this output is going to be 1 this output is 1 vx was already 1 then vy will go to 0 and then when vy goes to 0 then this downward signal will go back again so effectively you increase the delay of up and down signal by two of these nand gates okay so we are able this is i will call this as nand based pft without delay in the reset path without delay in reset path in this particular case you see that your t overlap increases earlier as soon as the reset signal went low what happened you actually made y equal to 0 but now it has to come through we have used one more uh, nand gate we have and uh, now it increases by 2 times t nand 2 okay so we want to increase t overlap we are able to increase t overlap without uh, changing the reset time okay thank you